Uh, next we're going to try a pair of uh, Grado HF1s. These are uh, limited edition, special edition headphone. Um, it was uh, as an inauguration of the first uh, HeadFi National Meet. That's why it's HF, it's for HeadFi. Um, these are serial number 69. I'm very uh, happy to have them and purchased them recently from Lewis, which was uh, cool. Thanks, man. Um, uh, we'll put these headphones on. <coughs> Here you can see that the signal is substantially different than uh, the LCD2 and the AKG. These are ear pad headphones as opposed to uh, circle moral. They're supra oral headphones. <coughs> so <coughs> uh, very typically they will have a, a substantially different frequency response or a square wave response. Uh, you can see the signal going uh, below zero here quite strongly. That's typical. It's indicating that the low frequencies have shifted in phase uh, substantially. Um, again with position I can uh, will not really change it very much but um, we, if we look at the uh, fine structure at the front end of the step. We can see it change. As I change the position of the headphones. So I'm going to go back, uh, put the head in the chamber, and uh, reposition the Quincy Jones headphones for the uh, to run the frequency response test. And uh, we'll look at that. All right, now that we've got the headphones positioned, we're ready to start the test. I've changed the layout on the screen here so we get a little bit bigger uh, graph. And uh, I'll start the frequency response test. It begins at 10 hertz down here, and you can see the uh, the left and right channels come up. Let me thicken this line up here for you. Okay, and it's moving rather slowly initially, and that's because it's such a low frequency that it takes a while for the analyzer to settle and uh, be able to take a reading. It does. Uh, do that automatically and I have settings that allow me to ensure that a data point is settled. As it goes up here it will soon reach the uh, uh, resonance, the primary resonance of the driver and start wiggling around. Right there. So that's where we know that the uh, we've gotten to the uh, primary resonance of the driver. Now it should remain fairly uh, even and flat uh, up to about 2 kilohertz, at which point the concha ridge of your ear will start, uh, or the head's ear will start amplifying the signal. Here we go. So that's the concha ridge amplifying, and then soon we'll start running into the uh, modal uh, uh, peaks and valleys from the resonances of the ear canal. Here's one. There's a valley and then more peaks. We'll go up and down quite a bit now. These are the uh, changes and the peaks and valleys that um, changing the position on the headphones back and forth uh, slightly moves those peaks and valleys around. And then when we average the measurements, it'll get smoother. We'll uh, show that uh, shortly. So we finished the first frequency response test. And now it's time to move the headphones into four other positions carefully. Okay, we've finished our fifth frequency response test, 
and uh, we'll have a look what happens to the data at that point. Uh, once the system is finished with the frequency response tests, it sends the data over to a spreadsheet. Here's the spreadsheet. <clears throat> Each of these, uh, this column is the uh, frequency at which the data point was taken. And then left and right, left and right, left and right, left and right, left and right for the five different positions. Okay, once it's finished, uh, once those p data points are all filled in, this, uh, these two uh, columns will have the, uh, the sum of the five data points in the, that were measured uh, and then divided by five, and that's how we get the averaging. And then the next column over will apply the d uh, compensation for the head-related transfer function to the averaged columns. And now we can switch to uh, the actual frequency response chart. So here we have the raw data, the 10 raw data measurements, five each for the left and the right channel. You can see that uh, as the headphones were moved around a little bit, there was uh, differences in the seal. Um, I try to get it uh, sealed as best I can at every point, but because it's moved in position, <coughs> it may uh, or have a slightly different uh, amount of seal. Um, I try to, to make the headphones um, perform best at each point, but uh, sometimes they don't. Now, with uh, uh, full-size headphones, it's not a big, as big a problem as it is with ear pad headphones, and uh, this may substantially move up and down and uh, will be a good indicator uh, what kind of spread there is on those data points of how easy it is to get a headphone to seal. So it's a reflection of the performance on the, of the, the seal performance of, on, of the headphone on the ear. Here again we see the uh, gain due to the concha uh, focusing right here, this uh, ridge here focusing the uh, energy into the ear canal between roughly between 2 and 7 kilohertz. Um, uh, and then here we see all the uh, various peaks and valleys that have been moving around a little bit. Uh, and then the top graph is the uh, averaged and head related transfer function compensated frequency response curve. As you can see it no longer has this hump in it anymore. Uh, and uh, should be a better indication of the uh, frequency response of the headphones. Okay, there we have it. How the uh, frequency response is measured um, when you take a look at our graphs and charts. Thanks very much for stopping by today.